Bula, it's me again. It's been a while, uh, in fact, four months since we last did one of these clips, and I figured it was time for us to do an update. Now, uh, as you all probably aware, we've had the general elections, the results have out, um, we've had the first sitting of parliament, uh, swearing in of the members, and the uh, election of the honorable leader of the opposition. And we've had uh, the first uh, powwow between the government and the opposition in the actual uh, 2015 budget debate. And in, in the middle of all that, of course, I was uh, honored to be asked by the um, leader of the opposition to head the office. And uh, it has been hectic. And I haven't had a time to even think straight for a while because it's been very, very engaging. And there's a lot, a lot happening all the way through. So I'm trying to uh, start this year off by giving you this update. Now, first off, let me say the, the subject I think that I should address first is the funding of the parliamentary offices. And the reason being it's current and it's affecting us today. Now, um, in this, in this uh, situation, the, I want to talk about the quick timelines about all the me whatever meetings that took place and then what this whole issue is about. Uh, between December the uh, 22nd and um, the 30th, uh, De December the 22nd, the Leader of the Opposition, Honorable Salote, Ranrondra and I met with the Secretary General. We discussed budget. Uh, and, and the budget discussions were the normal budget discussions that uh, we would have expected. There were some issues. It was agreed that we should go back, have a look at it, and submit our thoughts uh, to her in writing. She agreed to do that, and that's exactly what we did. And we, uh, the Honorable Leader signed off on the letter, and we sent it to her on the 22nd. Then we had the Christmas break. Uh, came back after Christmas, the 30th of December, I received a visit from the Secretary General and her assistant. Unexpected, uh, but in that meeting, she proceeded to announce uh, that uh, following a directive from the Minister of Finance, the funding mechanism is now changed. So uh, being surprised, I asked what that what meant. She said, well, now we will pay it on the basis of the number of members you have in the House, and we'll allocate $10,000 per member per annum, and that's the method. Uh, so she then said that all of the rules pertaining to the civil service uh, um, uh, uh, rules that we are supposed to be subject to are now out the window and that no longer applies. I said to her that was in breach of her, uh, her position and her powers as the Secretary General. I also told her that the minister was actually wrong and he was in breach of the law by directing her. She had a letter from the minister in front of her, and I did ask her to put what she's just told me in writing and attach a copy of the minister's letter. She left and then went and met with the National Federation Party member. Okay. The next time uh, uh, this, uh, the next uh, discussion occurred was on the 8th of January, and that was between the Honorable Leader of the Opposition, the Honorable Whip, and myself, and I was updating them about what had transpired. Uh, the Leader of the Opposition then prepared a letter in response to put the position of the Opposition in perspective. While this was being done, we got information that another letter was issued from the Secretary General of Parliament to the uh, Secretary Generals of the political parties. Um, and in this letter, uh, the actual amount given had increased from 10,000, which was told to me four days earlier, uh, to uh, 15,000. We then included this in the uh, letter, which the uh, Leader of the Opposition sent on to the Secretary General. That was on the 8th. And on the 9th, Friday the 9th, all the members of the Opposition staff, including myself, then received their termination uh, letters. That's what sort of happened in a nutshell. In nine days, we've had this complete 180 degree turn in the funding mechanism of, of Parliament. Now, the issue that the Honourable Leader of the Opposition and the caucus members and Sadalpa have with this is that the Secretary General has erred uh, in following this instruction from the Minister of Finance because under the Constitution, her decisions are not to be subject to any outside directive. That's number one. Number two, the current finance management rules say that if you do have any surpluses of any type, they are to be returned to consolidated funds. This, this method that they have devised will mean that the political parties will get to keep their surpluses and to use it as they, say fit, they see fit. Now that is outrageous. 
Now, if they want to change the rules pertaining to funding political parties, then they must introduce new laws and make changes so that it can be done correctly. What will happen is this. Fiji First, with 32 members of parliament, is getting $480,000 per annum. Yet, out of the 32 members, 20 members are ministers and assistant ministers. And only 12 are backbenchers who utilize the office. Sadalpa will get $225,000. And its current costs are just about $200,000. NFP will get uh, $45,000. And their current costs are $70,000. So they will be uh, uh, facing a deficit each, each month. The point we're making here is that in four years' time, if this is happening from this year, in, in the four years of parliament, Fiji First will net a surplus in funds for themselves and their party of over $1.2 million. Sadalpa, if it contains its costs, may be able to have a surplus of about 180000 and the NFP will have a deficit of 120000 in year four. This is not what the funding of parliament is supposed to be about. It's supposed to be that the Secretary General funds the costs of each of the political parties' respective officers. And that is the issue. And that is why the leader of the opposition and the caucus and NFP have all rejected this. I will tell you more about this particular issue as things come to hand because it is currently in process. We are still in the process of having these dialogues. Thank you very much.